Hi and welcome back to the uh, Data Lake in a Day series. Uh, this series is designed as a set of labs and a few sessions like this one to help you understand what a data lake is, how it could be useful to your organisation uh, and the kind of basics of setting one up and just to show you how easy it is to, uh, to set one up and to configure. So uh, the previous sessions, if you can see a link up there uh, and down in the description, uh, previous sessions were Lab 1 and the setup for Lab 1 um, and these ran through how to get your first set of data, how to configure the, uh, the data lake uh, and it took you through deploying the infrastructure for these labs. Uh, this session now is a just an informational session so feel free to skip that if you prefer the labs. Uh, but this one is going to go into what a data lake is, what it does um, and how it could be useful for your organisation. So I hope you enjoy the video, if you do click the like button down there uh, do subscribe to the channel so that you get notifications when new videos come out um, and so that they show up in your feed. Thanks very much, enjoy the video. So what is a data lake? Um, this is a question we get asked quite a lot uh, and there are lots of different answers depending on uh, kind of what your perspective is. But at the basic, uh, most simple explanation is it's a place to store structured and unstructured data and to allow that to be processed. So it's a computer then. Um, effectively, what separates this from just a normal computer with a disk and a processor is generally scale. It, it doesn't have to be massive, but generally uh, we see these being used to process lots of data. So a traditional data solution um, for instance, a database is going to store data in a very structured format. So we will have columns that of a certain type. So we might have a, a numerical column for uh, price data and we might have a text column for description data and we know where those are and where to expect them and how they link between tables and that kind of thing. Um, those kinds of systems generally are scale up as well. So uh, for instance, a SQL Server you will have a SQL Server and you can make it bigger and bigger and bigger to process larger amounts of data but there are obviously limits to how big a single system image can be uh, and then we get into complexities like splitting that data, putting tables on different systems and, and that kind of thing. Uh, the obvious limitations there are we're not able to really store unstructured data and process it in the, in the same sort of way um, and also the this, this scale out things. So, uh, the way that data lakes address this is the data is stored on a scale-out file system. So uh, this could be a Hadoop file system or it could be blob storage or it could be uh, data lake storage um, on the Azure cloud or the equivalents on other clouds. Um, and those allow us to store trillions of files. The, there are no limits uh, in terms of number of files on, on most of these solutions. Um, and it, it means that because we're scaling out that the bandwidth and the uh, scale is growing with the system so we can just keep throwing data in there and that data can be of any type so we can store structured data in there in, in tables we could use CSV format or Parquet we'll go into those in, in a later video um, and we can store things like images we can store text we can store audio um, all of these unstructured things and we can still process those in the same kinds of ways uh, and when we it comes to processing we generally have a massively parallel processing system something like Hadoop, Databricks, um, SQL Data Warehouse all of these systems have one thing in common and that's that the scale grows not just up we can make larger individual compute nodes but we can add more nodes and this then means that we can finish a job in a time that suits us and uh, so rather than accepting that that size system is going to process in 10 hours we could in theory double the system and finish in five hours uh, just by adding more compute and importantly then we can switch off that compute so quite often the architecture that we're seeing these days has a um, an ingest process where we bring data onto that data lake then we'll have a processing phase where we're cleaning up the data, where we're modeling the data. That uses a, a set of compute nodes that run just while we're processing the data. Then when it's finished, we load that into a presentation layer that allows us either to query the data or to uh, display that data, such as Power BI, that kind of thing. Um, and because those are separated, we can size them according to what they're doing. So 
the processing layer needs to process in a set amount of time so that the data is relevant when it's uh, finished processing and the presentation layer needs to be sized based on the number of users and how often they're going to be consuming that data. Uh, so we're going to take a look at uh, some slides now and see uh, a few more aspects of data lakes and a bit of an introduction to the idea of analytics and those sorts of things. But first we're going to cover some uh, kind of alternative things for, for processing data. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is the typical data platform that we see a lot of people out there using. Um, so this is fairly common uh, in lots of companies where people will just write stuff down, maybe type that information into Excel, copy and paste it into a Word document, transcribe it into a CRM system, download it as a CSV, copy into Excel, create a graph, show it to the boss in a PowerPoint. Um, this is a very long convoluted process. All of these things can be improved upon. So for instance, instead of writing stuff down on paper, digitalization uh, allows us to capture that digitally. So when we say digitalization, this means making a process digital. It's not the same as digitization, uh, which is making data digital. So in this instance, rather than writing results down on paper, if you're testing in a lab or something like that, uh, or you're recording quality control in a factory, you could use something like a power app to easily capture that. Uh, the power app is going to take you maybe a couple of hours to, to create, just put some boxes there for the data that you're trying to capture. And then from that moment on, you can just use that power app to capture the data directly into a computer readable format. Instead of all of this typing into Excel, transcribing stuff, moving it about, uh, we could just do that processing uh, digitally. So we could use the data platform uh, on the data lake to transform it into a model that is able to be consumed. We could just use Power BI, of course, to directly load that data. Uh, and instead of copying a graph from Excel into PowerPoint, uh, these days it's much easier just to create a Power BI uh, dashboard and present that to somebody. And what you'll find is that initially you'll be showing somebody the Power BI dashboard and talking them through the results, but within uh, a couple of sessions, that person will be more than capable of interpreting the results by themselves. So where you used to have a meeting where you would turn up and use a PowerPoint and show somebody some information, uh, what actually then happens is you no longer need that meeting. You might have a quick call or a quick chat afterwards uh, just so that you can discuss the results, but both parties are then coming to that meeting already knowing the results. And that's uh, quite a saving in time and quite a saving in effort. Um, and it, it really cuts a lot of things out of that process. So when we talk about data lakes and data platforms, all of this is to ensure that the um, data in your organization can get from source to consumption much easier and without too much human uh, intervention, which then allows people to get on with their actual jobs rather than transcribing data or copying data uh, or any of those kinds of things. So now we've got a couple of slides about uh, specifically analytics and what analytics is for and the journey that your business might go on starting from having no analytics capability all the way through to uh, quite advanced analytics. Uh, we won't obviously go into how to do those analytics, but uh, we'll go into the why. So on this slide, we can see the standard what happened question uh, this might be done through logging and just looking at information and kind of seeing, uh, you know, what did, how many did we sell last week? How many did we produce? Uh, those kinds of questions and really just seeing what has happened with no real uh, insight into why it happened or any of those kinds of things. Uh, the next level up when we do a bit of digging, a bit of processing of that information, we then f start to work out why it happened. So we might be able to see uh, a, a, an event that caused something to happen. Uh, so maybe there was a hot day and therefore we sold more ice cream and things like that. Uh, really basic insights, but uh, allowing us to interpret the, the information there. Uh, next is predictive analytics, where we try to work out what's going to happen uh, in the future. So if we know that we sold more ice cream because there was a hot day, then perhaps if we know that there's going to be a hot day, we know that we're going to sell more ice cream. And this is useful to, to businesses for planning reasons. So if I know I'm going to sell more ice cream, I might want to produce more ice cream. 
or if I'm not going to sell very much, then I would make less of it uh, and perhaps have less waste and things like that. Um, we can also use this technique for things like predictive maintenance in factories, which then reduces downtime, uh, which makes us more productive or reduces cost or any of those kinds of things. Uh, and then finally, how can we make it happen? So obviously we're not able to control the weather, but uh, in this example that we're talking about now, if we could give people the feeling that it's going to be a hot day or the feeling of uh, a, a nice summer time or something like that, then maybe they're going to buy more ice cream. Uh, so we really, at this point, know what outcome we want. We know what can produce that outcome. And then we focus our business on trying to make those things happen. Uh, and this really allows us to optimize the business and, uh, and get more out of our data and hopefully maximize profit, obviously. So this slide really sums up the last couple of slides uh, in, in one nice image. So uh, we can see at the bottom there, um, we've got the static reports that uh, may be manually generated, that kind of thing. Then there's a large manual process before any kind of decision can be made. And what we're trying to achieve with these uh, modern data platforms is to reduce the manual process as much as we possibly can that happens before the decision. And eventually uh, you can kind of see We'll go through a stage of interactive dashboards so that we can work out why things happened. Uh, then we're going to go with predictions so the computer can tell us what's, uh, what's going to happen. And then we'll get all the way through, once we get very, very good at this, the computer might not only be able to tell us what we should do, what action we should be taking, and then the human just has to say, okay, then let's do that. Uh, eventually, we get such confidence in the system that we can just get the system to make those decisions for us. So in the example of the ice cream earlier, if the system can see that there's going to be a hot day, it might just turn up the dial on how many ice creams we're going to uh, produce rather than waiting for somebody uh, in charge to say, OK, let's produce more ice creams because it's going to be hot a week on Wednesday. Um, there shouldn't be any need for that person to do that because that person by this point is taking the same decision every single time. Um, so we know that we're going to make that decision. Why not just have something automate the, the action at the end of it? And finally, we can kind of see all of the uh, uses for uh, the data lakes. So we might have traditional database systems such as SQL Server, uh, or you may have Oracle or SAP or those kinds of systems. Uh, and we can just import the data from that so that we can do these uh, analytical processes on them. We can also do data science and machine learning so that we don't have to do everything by ourselves. Uh, we may also have IoT, so we could have machines in a factory. We can connect uh, vehicles so that we can get uh, bus data from the engine. Um, we might have applications out there, so people might be out there just typing things in, um, collecting data from the public or from employees or, or whatever. Uh, and we may have things like logic apps that are, that are going out to external sources. Uh, for instance, we might be connecting off to the stock market to get information. We might be getting weather data. Uh, pretty much any data that's out there, we might be uh, consuming that into the lake. And as far as utilizing that data goes, we might then join these things up in order to just make a model and kind of see the data and visualize that data, in which case we're going to... Uh, take it, change it, and view it in Power BI or something like that. Or we might want to train a machine learning model or, or some other system so that it can recognize new data, take uh, take a decision on it, give us some, some new information, and then we can publish that back out as a kind of process uh, for other things to consume. So we might then embed that into our IoT solutions so that we can see when a factory machine is going to break down because it's running a bit hot or it's vibrating a bit too much. Or we might want something that is able to answer a customer query. So if we can see from sales data that uh, a certain kind of people buy a certain kind of holiday, then uh, the application could call into that machine learning algorithm and uh, present the data about the current user and give it that person better recommendations for, for what they're going to buy. Um, so all of these things sit from a single uh, data platform design, so we can kind of centralize these things, have standard processes to get them done, and that should reduce the cost and make them easier and really bake these processes into the business uh, to not make this an unusual thing to do, but to make it the standard way that we work uh, going forwards.
And as you'll see through the labs, all of these things are relatively straightforward individually to uh, create. So don't think of this as one enormous system that we have to sit down and design uh, and there's lots of complexity and things like that. Actually look at it in terms of the way the labs are structured. Uh, lab one is just getting data from a database. Lab two is getting some weather data from the internet. And each of these labs is maybe an hour of your time to configure that and get that data data source uh, into the lake. And that's not really very different in a real production environment. So you can point to any database. There are obviously a few security considerations in a, in a real scenario, but actually the ingestion of the data is really, really quick. And then deciding what to do with it is something that comes over time. Uh, as you practice, you'll very quickly get into a rhythm of knowing what to do with the data. Uh, so start with a small project. And uh, what you'll see is by the time you finish that project, you'll have ideas for the next one and the next one and the next one. Uh, and also look around the business. And if you see somebody writing something down or doing something manually, just think to yourself, is there a quicker way of doing that? Could we make that more digital? Uh, could we use a power app maybe instead of uh, writing something down? Could we use a barcode scanner to standardize barcodes on uh, the production line, for instance? to save writing down that this uh, ingredient went into this batch. We could just scan the batch number. We can scan the uh, ingredient. And then the system is aware that those things were related. And so we can start reporting on them. So the important thing here is, is just to get going and, and have a go with it. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. Um, the next lab is going to come up within the next week or so. And in that, we're going to be uh, showing how to get data from external sources. So the lab involves uh, reaching out to a weather service using a logic app um, and just downloading data for, for the cities that are within our sales data. Um, and then in a later lab, we're going to join that to the sales data that we got in lab one. So uh, hit subscribe down below so you, you catch when that's released. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks very much.